Hello, how's it going? In this um, video, I'm going to discuss how to set up a tessellation shader to add geometry to a shape. In the little, little demo that you just saw, we had a spline, a Bezier curve, and we actually got this by passing in just four data points, four control points, which were used to generate the curve. We can show this by reducing, there are sort of two parameters here which are of importance, strip count, which we can think of as sort of the number of curves, which that'll always be one, and <clears throat> segment count, which is the number of steps to break the curve into. So if we put in four segments, then fingers crossed, we should just sort of basically see the original control points. This is the actual data which has been passed into the shader pretty much. And then we can just dial this up to any number we want. Let me go with a smaller number. <clears throat> and the tessellation shader will take that data and interpolate it, tessellate basically, and generate a whole bunch of points. So the TLDR of this, so I'll just briefly run through the shaders and the parameters which we need to set. <clears throat> and then, of course, the devil's in the details. So then I'll go through and talk about some of the considerations to make in implementing this. So there are sort of four shaders which are important. Uh, vertex, then we have tessellation control shader then tessellation evaluation shader, and then a fragment shader. So the vertex shader is very simple. It does almost nothing. It just takes in a vertex, a position, and passes it along to its internal mechanics. This is implemented, uh, sorry, intercepted by the tessellation control shader. Now what the tessellation control shader does is it sort of assembles this data puts it into a patch. A patch is an arbitrary data structure, which is used by the evaluation shader. Oh, sorry, <clears throat> no, <coughs> what's up with that? A patch is passed to a tessellator and a tessellator does the work of uh, running and, and making all the, the vertices and stuff, all those extra vertices but it, the tessellator will call a tessellation evaluation shader and say, hey, um, this is the vertex that I have. What should its position be? Hopefully this is sounding okay. There are sort of two things we need to worry about. We take the point that's coming in and then we're using the invocation ID. So this could be point number zero, one, two, or three. When we have four points defined, that's a complete patch. So we just store the position that's coming in as our sort of output to the patch. And then we need to specify the tessellation level. So the way tessellation works is we have sort of two different tessellation coordinates. One of these is called U and the other one's called V. So um, we can think about this. We can think about U as like a an X and V as like a Y, or really think about it however you want. Now, it would be tempting to write this, but depending on your implementation, your driver implementation, these coordinates may be swapped around. And I found that that was the case for me. Now, the way this works, and I'll sort of go more in depth in it later, but we'll have, let's say, very technical, okay? So let's say we have some sort of thing that we're breaking up. So this is our sort of four points, who knows? And um, here, let's say this is 
v equals, yeah, we'll go v equals one, v equals zero, u equals zero, u equals one. And I'll be going in more detail in the next video in this series where we actually do two-dimensional tessellation. But the idea is right now we're sort of taking this portion and we're saying tessellate in one dimension. So split this up and those are the parameters that we're putting in here. So the tessellation along the V when V equals zero is one and the tessellation along the U when V equals zero is some number. And that's essentially sort of what we're doing here. So we're saying, okay, here when V equals zero, we'll tessellate along the U by some number, we'll tessellate along the V by some number, which will be one. Anyway, I'm rambling, but it is important. And this is something that you sort of have to feel out, do a few examples. In the next video, we'll go through two dimensional tessellation, which will sort of build on this more. But long story short, this just specifies how the space is going to be broken up into pieces. And then the actual building of those pieces is performed by the evaluation shader. Now, I know I've said T here because that sort of makes sense with lines, but really this is U. But anyway, so um, it breaks this space up and creates something called isolines. ISO meaning same, meaning I guess the lines have the same length or something. So we declare that we're taking in ISO lines, and this is where we apply the model view projection transformation to this um, coordinate that we calculate. We get the U coordinate, or we're going to call it the T coordinate, by accessing the GL tessellation coordinate. Then we take the points from the patch and use those to get our four control points for the Bezier curve. We calculate the coefficients for our Bezier curve, evaluate it, and then we write this point P out as our output. So this shader is run many, many times and it will calculate our points. By the time we get to our fragment, it's a uh, quite straightforward, we simply set a color. We could also do other things, pass data along to the fragment shader, calculate lighting and stuff like that. That's fine for now. Okay, now in order to use this, we also need to specify, need to set a thing here. We need to set a GL patch parameter integer, specify that the patch vertices, there's four of them. And this ensures that we have a complete patch. Then, okay, in order to draw something, we would need just a basically a, a vertex buffer object with four points and go through the corresponding method of setting up a vertex array object and all of that. And then in order to render, Okay, so we just set the data that we need to set, the color and the transform, the view and all of that. Um, we go GL draw arrays and then the draw mode has to be GL patches. So we're gonna pass in a, a patch. So that was the TLDR. We can run this basically and it interpolates between those points and the evaluation shader runs at each of those points to generate the position that we see on the screen. Now in terms of details and implementation, there's a few things that I ran across while I was doing this. First of all, I noticed that I could simplify my shader layout, my whole shader setup. So if I go, oh, I don't have it here, that's fine. So go here. Um, instead of having a function for a shader and a function for a geometry shader and all of that, I've simplified it quite a bit. I just have a struct which holds corresponding file names to various things. And I have a general load shader module function, which gets told, okay, load this sort of shader, load this sort of shader. So as you can see, I just search through and I check if I've got a file name 
And if I do, then I create these with the appropriate flags. For the tessellation, it's GL test control shader, for instance. And what this function is doing down below is essentially copy pasting the code from before. So it reads a file and then uh, compiles it. And here, GL create shader takes the type of shader that we want to create and yeah, compiles and returns it or logs an error. And then up above, we sort of just loop through all of the shaders which have been created, the shader modules, and attach them. And that seems to work pretty well. In terms of getting the point, uh, getting the, the spline curve, if I go to, have these all up here, scene. Okay, so I've got this curve object and the way the curve object works is I set up a vector of points, which are the control points. I pass those in for the curve and the curve simply stores them. Then what the engine does is the engine reads the points from the curve and it has sort of a curve builder object and it tells the curve builder object to build itself. So here we are, we go, we have this curve mesh and the curve mesh is this dynamic curve and it has these functions. We can create it, we can build it, rebuild it and everything. There we go, okay. Now this is a big thing. Um, in these series, I'm using modern OpenGL, so I'm using dynamic, i uh, sorry, direct state access, DSA. And so some of these functions are a little different to how they normally are written. When I create this, originally we have no data at all. So we just pass in null for the pointer, for the named buffer storage. But then I want to be able to create or flash over basically v buffers dynamically. So when I created it, I have this GL dynamic storage bit and that goes hand in hand with this GL named buffer sub data. The way this works, so as you can see, we get in a vector of uh, three dimensional points and we sort of loop through it and flatten them out into a vertex of just numbers, one, two, three, four, whatever. Then we wanna sort of copy that whole set of numbers into this VBO. So we use GL named buffer sub data, the buffer name, the um, offset, then the number of bytes we're sending over. So we've got um, 12 numbers, four bytes per number, so 48 bytes, and then the pointer here. So I messed around a little bit with, um, what is it? GL map named buffer and map named buffer range. They just didn't work at all. So, and, and I, I looked online, I tried everything. For instance, when we create this, we can't really map to it unless we go um, put in GL map right bit and there are some other bits that we can set it still didn't work so i just wanted to go through that it's pretty important um yeah otherwise i've i've gone way over time and the point was we can make splines and we can even dynamically change their detail based on distance and things so that's pretty important and in the future we'll be looking at surfaces as well so we can have models with sort of arbitrary level of detail as we get closer or further um, but yeah I've, I've gone over time but that was what i wanted to talk about anyway hope you found this useful um, check out the code linked below and if you have any questions you can leave a comment or you can hop on our discord that's linked below as well and shoot me a line there and yeah all the best with it and have fun and I'll see you again soon. Bye.